Okay, in this video I'm going to finish up a few things on the face. Uh, particularly, I'm going to show you how to import the blush that's going to be under the eyes. So I'm going to head over to Photoshop. And I have this character layered out, like I've got the lines separate from the body and everything. I got the spots separate, all those things. Here are the cheeks, okay? And I have them masked to the face, like I could disable that mask and you'd see the full thing. It's important to make it this way. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to disable that mask. I'm gonna bring the mask up here and I am going to just temporarily use my lasso tool, cut, paste, and I'll say this is uh, blush left, and I'll call this blush right. No, I don't like left and right. I'd rather do one and two. Okay, and then I'm going to do this. I love using this little thing. It is uh, quick export PNGs. Quick export is PNG, so it's control shift apostrophe. What it does is it takes whatever you have selected and it will export it. It exports it as a PNG and it crops it down to the correct size. The thing that drives me crazy is when people are exporting stuff from Photoshop, but they leave the bounding box this big, and I just need to adjust this thing that's this small. Like, people's pupils and, pe and having the bounding box this big is so annoying. <laughs> Anyways, the woes of, of PNG builds. All right, so I've got what I need, and I'll probably just press undo a bunch of times because that's easy to do that again if I needed to do that again. I'll just close it. Wow. Okay. So I will go File, Import, Images, Browse, Shift Select both of those. Um, I don't want to create a single layer. And I, I do want to keep it as original bitmap. I want to do project resolution. Do not press fit. That would make the blush the size of the screen. So just project resolution straight. That means that the transparency will come in transparent. Otherwise, this would make all your transparency white or this would make it all black. So just stay with the straight. Okay, now whenever you import something, the, the one place you can always count on it to go is to the very bottom of your timeline. Who knows where it went in our node view? It went down there to the main composite. Okay, well, I'm gonna go select those. Uh, I had, let me tell you what I had done because I didn't know where they were. I did know that they were right here. So I shift selected them here and then I press center on selection here, which is usually the shortcut O and I use the shortcut G. But you can check out one of my other videos about why I like to use different shortcuts. All right, so I've got blush one and two. These are PNGs. I'm going to go control H so it adds a composite. Honestly, I want these to only show up on the face. So I think, man, I've, I've been plugging so many things into here that I kind of don't want to keep doing that. But I kind of think it's the best thing to do. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a composite here, control H, oh, I might as well name this intelligibly. So this was spots revealed on body. And then I'm going to slide this composite, hold alt, and I'm going to say Parts revealed on body dash or underscore comp. All right, so I know that those spots are getting cut to the face, and that's the same thing that I want for this blush. So I am going to make another backdrop, and I'll just say 
parts revealed on body. <sighs> masked. Parts masked to body. I think that makes more sense to me. All right, so I will drag a cable. Oh, I'll name this nicely first. Blush comp. Will the blush be in front of or behind the spots? Probably behind the spots. Okay, now you will notice that when you click on these, um, they're gonna come to the dead center of the screen. So you need to permanently move them to where you want them to be. And when you want to permanently change their starting position, you wanna use a static transformation. So follow me on this. To make a static transformation, I'm gonna go Control shift p I am going to use this and move it over here. If you don't like the yellow highlight, you can just click on this so that you can actually see what it's doing. I'm going to do the same kind of thing over here. I don't know. Maybe that's the right place. Maybe it's not. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a static transformation. Slide them in under here. Now, what would happen is if I had selected the whole rig and pressed R to reset, the cheek stuff would go back to there. I don't want that to happen. Instead, I'm going to use a static transformation. I, I say, bake immediate parents transformation. So now it says the X and Y values are, are what used to be, are what are saved here. You can see those X and Y values of the peg are now like baked into the static transformation. So now it's way too far off. That's because both of them are moving it over that much. So now I delete the peg. It has served its purpose. I'm gonna do the same thing here with the static transformation. Bake that parents, delete. Okay, so now if anybody ever comes and resets everything, ah. Uh, It's, it reset the drawing size. Well, we'll just uh, deal with it. Control Shift P. I'm glad that we tried that out and somebody else didn't figure it out later on accident and it would be frustrating to them. So I'll just size them here. That looks cute. We can imagine that that looks cute. Okay, maybe this gets a little bigger. Control, shift, and middle mouse is what I am pressing. Now I am going to add my static transformations. And now, if anybody ever comes through and resets everything, it'll go back to this size. And if you ever wanted to change the graphic and re-import it, you could just slide it in under here, as long as it's the same size and it'll come in in the right place. So um, that's how I would handle the blush. Now we want to add some actual pegs to move it around in case you ever want to. And let's just add a prefix to these just because. I'm going to use that cool script that I have, replace, and I'm just going to replace dash transformation with nothing. Static works for me. All right, now I come here, control shift P. Now notice it added the pegs, but they're not connected. That's because something was plugged in up above it. They are named the correct thing. Plug these in, select. Um, Alt 3 to get my rotate tool on the advanced toolbar. Advanced animation toolbar. Hold control, select both of those. Great, so now I click on that, I can move that around. Click on it, move it around. I 
I press Control P to add a peg there. Blush master peg. Let's just move it out of zero zero. Even if zero zero looked like it would have been a nice place to leave it. All right. Now with the mouth, we haven't done the mouth yet, but uh, maybe, maybe we should. Um, no, we will leave it until later. But I just still want to get everything built out right now. So I'm gonna select all this stuff: the cheeks and the mouth. Control Shift P. Control P. This will be the master peg of the mouth. Um, I usually add one more peg above the mouth and I call it the building builder peg. <laughs> and I don't like people to uh, animate on this one. We'll, we'll explain that later, but I'll add a backdrop and say that this is the builder peg. Uh, I'll just give you an idea of what it is for right now. It is there simply to make sure that the mouth is squashing and skewing and stretching at the right places on the face for torso tilts and stuff, but you want to be able to be able to select this master peg to copy and paste um, your normal um, shapes of your mouth. You don't want to always copy and paste where the location is because you might have the mouth over here and then you copy and paste from somewhere and it comes back to here. Uh, with this kind of setup, this keeps it in a position while this kind of just works as a bundling together peg. Some people like that, some people don't. Okay, the eyes are going to get a master peg. Well, I think, I think I'm actually going to um, finish building all of this and then I'll, I'll come back to clone things. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's put things together. We want everything connected. All right. So we've got the torso. So after you get up the torso, the next thing that you're going to want is you want all the clothes to come with it. And then after you get up from there, I think I would want the arms to come with it. So I'm just going to go control P, control P, control P. Okay. So next I want the arms. And then next, I think I would want, let's just go ahead and add, um, we haven't done the leg yet. So maybe I will wait on that. Okay, so what comes next? We click on this, goes up. Okay, we get the clothes. Next up, comes with the arms. No, I think next up, I actually want the face. Arms after. Okay, so now I need to get the face together. So I've got the mouth, an eye, blush, maybe the spots? Nah, I'll leave the spots separate. All right, so I press Control P to add one. I'm gonna call this one facial features. And when a character has a nose, I usually am attaching it to this, this peg. All right, next up, I think I want to go with another peg, which will include the spots. Okay, so features and spots. And then next up, I think if the head were separate, next up I'd go to like the hat coming with it, and then next up I'd go to the neck coming with it. But because those are integrated to the body, I think I want to just the next thing up. Control P. So now I've got a peg that has all of 
that stuff. Let's see. I'm kind of experimenting here. I'm not sure if this is how I'm actually going to want it. Okay, parent up. Great. 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 Yeah, I don't think... Well, maybe I would want to go to the facial features next and leave the hat until later. So the hat comes later. Okay. Hook that up to the hat. Delete that. I don't need that peg. All right. So I'm here. Good. And I could squash and stretch that. And then I get to the arms, squash and stretch. And then I get to the hat. Yeah, I think I want that. And then the next one up would get the legs with it. I'll come back and name these something better in a minute. I just wanted to get the idea. Who knows? I'll just plug it in there for the time being. Um, and while I am at it, let's go ahead and copy some pivots. So here, the torso. Is that where I want the pivot? No. I like the torso to be down here. So I am going to set that pivot. If it's not already set. No, it's not set. I am going to choose that. Hold control. Click all this stuff. Everything except for the legs. And then I am going to use the rotate tool and move the pivot point down here. Let me show you why. I want to be able to rotate it. I want to be able to skew it. And I see that that cheek needs to be attached. And we need to set the pivot point for that thing. Okay, I think the cheek... Do I want it to come with the mouth builder peg or the mouth peg? I'll bring it with the mouth peg. Now, mouth peg, we need to set that pivot point, and usually I like to set it at the top of the lip, so right there. Tongue is probably going to be down here just a little bit. Okay. And I think most of these things have been set. Facial features, that stuff makes sense right there, but I'm going to move it just so it's not zero, zero. Because I have a script that will check for me whether everything is zero, zero or not. This is the master peg. This comes down to the bottom of the feet where the heels touch the ground. And uh, so I, I will name that one right now. This one will be master and then the one above that is going to be the scene peg. This one, uh, the scene peg is for moving the character um, with the shadow trailing underneath the feet. Also for scaling the character for as big as it needs to be in the scene. That way you can still copy and paste reusable poses from one place to another without it making it giant or tiny or flipped or whatever that the scene peg is, is doing. So I will press undo. Just wanted you to see what those are. I will copy the pivot from here and paste it there. All right, I will stop there. In the next video, I'm going to show you the leg, which is pretty much just a repeat of the arm. See you soon.